Hi, welcome to this awesome opportunity for you and I to do a quick study of God's Word. Um, let's have a quick word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We ask that you open our eyes of understanding and help us to see this truth and also give us the grace to apply them in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I want us to look at something that is very important. Um, a, a lot of believers, a lot of Christians struggle when it comes to getting answers to prayers. So um, in a few minutes, I want us to look at how to get answers to prayers. Of course, there are so many um, aspects to this, but we're just going to take a look at one component of it. And maybe in, in other videos, we'll be able to look at some other areas of it. Um, when it comes to prayer, which is talking to God or going to God the Father um, with a request, there are different types of prayer um, that there is, and um, and different types of prayers require um, different rules and guidelines. So I'm gonna just try to limit this to when it comes to okay, I have a need, and I'm taking this need to God in prayer, and I need answers for it. Okay, so I want us to narrow it down to that point. The very first foundational thing you must know is that God honors his word. God honors his word. This is very, very key. When it comes to prayer, one of the most effective ways to get results for your prayers is to ensure that what you're praying for is in line with the word of God you would be amazed at so many prayer points that are rendered on a daily basis that are anti God's word, uh, that are not in line with the word of God. And once you go in that direction, God is not obligated to answer you because he will not violate his word. God will not violate his word. So one sure way to get answers to your prayers is for you to make sure that what you are asking God for is in line with the written word of God. For us as Christians, the Bible is the acid test that you use to um, check out anything that you're doing. And when it comes to prayer, that is also very key. Okay, this request that I'm making right now, what scripture backs it up? This request that I'm making right now, what scripture backs it up? This is very, very key because if you're making a request, if you're asking God for something that is not in line with the word of God, then God is not obligated to answer you. So it's important that we have that as our foundation. Let's look at the scripture. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 43 and verse um, 26. Isaiah 43 and verse 26. He said, put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your keys that you may be acquitted. But look at what he says. They said, put me in remembrance. So prayer is you taking the word of God back to God and saying, Lord, your word says this. Now I release my faith and I make a request based on your word, not based on emotions, not based on feelings, but based on the word of God. Please, there are so many of us that think that, oh, if I'm emotional about this, then God must be moved to answer. That's not the way it works. God listens to prayers when it is based on his word. I want to show you um, another scripture. Go with me to Psalms chapter 138. Psalms chapter 138. Remember we said there are different types of prayers. Okay, there, there are times that you come to pray and you're just in fellowship with the Father. Um, there are different types of prayer, but we're talking about when you're making a petition. When you're asking 
um, you're making a petition for a request, make sure that that is based on the word of God. Psalms 138, and um, let's look at verse 2. It says, I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. He said, for you have magnified your word above all your name. God Almighty has magnified his word. In other words, God will not violate his word to answer your prayers. I don't know if that makes sense to you. God will not violate his word to answer your prayers. It is important that when you are bringing a petition to God, ensure that what you are asking for falls in line with the word of God. Um, there was a situation of where somebody was praying and even fasting seriously for a very long time. And um, it was a lady and she was asking God for somebody that was already married to another person. And in her heart, she believed that uh, the gentleman married wrong and that the man was supposed to be her husband. Now, and this, and she made this a prayer point for a very long time. And she believed that the more she prayed, that God was going to bring a divorce between the man and his wife and was now going to restore him to her as her own husband. Now, the truth about this is that you can pray that prayer until you're blue in the face and nothing is going to happen. Why? Because what you're asking for falls outside the jurisdiction of God's word. And God is not obligated to answer you when what you're praying for is outside of his word. So make sure that, okay, I have a request. I'm taking it to God, but what scripture am I standing on? Because the word of God says, put me to remembrance. God said that, remind me of what my word says, and I will do it unto you. Okay, so this is important. Now, um, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 says this is the confidence that we have, that if we ask anything in line with the will of God, that we know that we receive that. This is the confidence we have, that if we ask anything that is in line with the will of God. How do you know the will of God? The word of God is the will of God. I'll say it again. The word of God is the will of God. So the basics, the very first place to start, ensure that what you are asking for is in line with the word of God. There is no easier way to have a prayer failure than for you to be making a request that is outside of God's word. This is very, very foundational. And I wanted to communicate that with you. Um, so, but after you've done this, let's take a look at another aspect of answers prayer, um, of answers to prayer. Now, look at this. I've prayed for something, and what I've prayed for is in line with the word of God. What do I do next? What do I do next? I want to talk to you a little bit about corresponding action. Corresponding action. If you truly believe that what you pray that God heard you, then it is time for you to take steps in line with what you've prayed for. It is time for you to take steps. For instance, I've asked God for a job. I'm believing God for a job. And I've prayed for a job. And, and I believe that the word of God says that it is God's will that I shall have something to do because God will bless the works of my hands. Awesome. That is good. I have prayed for that. What must I do next? I must start applying. I must take my resume and begin to apply for jobs. I, I don't expect that if I'm on my bed and I've prayed for a job, that God is just going to force a job on me. That's not the way it works. Now, you may have even heard of somebody that maybe gave a testimony. I, I wasn't looking for this job and I was there and this job came to me. 
That is an exception rather than the rule. And you don't build your life based on exceptions. If you believed God that when you prayed for a job that God heard you, then you must take corresponding action. So let me show you James chapter 2. James chapter 2. These things are very, um, very foundational. James chapter 2. Then look at, I'm going to read verse 26 for us. He said, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. As the body without the spirit is dead, faith without corresponding action is dead also. So if you've prayed for something, what are the steps that you need to take that are in line with what you've prayed for? We've seen people that have made the mistake of praying for one thing, but by the actions and the steps they are taking, they're going in the opposite direction of what they prayed for. So they're using their steps to cancel the very things that they had prayed about. And that's not right. Another thing that can affect your um, the answers to prayer, I just um, talked about corresponding action is the words that come out of your mouth. It's amazing um, how much power our words carry. Our words carry power. We are created in the image of God, and your words are not empty. When you speak, it has effects. God says in Numbers chapter 14, verse 28, He said, As I've heard you speak to my hearing, so will I do unto you. So imagine somebody that you've prayed for a job and now instead of you believing that that job is coming your way and you're acting in line with it, but each time you open your mouth, you speak negative things about the job. Oh, I know that, you know, there's really no way I'm going to get this job because, you know, nobody really likes employing people like me. And uh, oh, it's so difficult right now to get a job. I'm not even sure that I'm going to get any. You can't keep talking like that and expect your faith to work. So there are three major things I've spoken to you about. Number one, ensure that what you're asking God for is based on God's word. That is number one. Number two, be willing to back this with corresponding action. And while you are doing this, it is very, very important that you watch what comes out of your mouth. Speak in line with what you're believing God for. If you don't know what else to do, just stay in the place of thanksgiving. Each time you remember that topic, open up your mouth and say, Father, I thank you. I have prayed for this thing and I thank you because you're walking behind the scene. I thank you because this is walking in, out in my favor. I thank you because the angels are busy bringing these answers to me. Stay in the place of thanksgiving. Make sure that you are matching what you've prayed with corresponding action and your miracles will surely come into your hands. God bless you.